Microdosing is what you earn after you've done the hard work of healing your metabolism. What if I told you that the secret to keeping your weight off forever after your GLP-1 weight loss isn't taking more medication and just maintaining that dose, it's taking less. But here's the catch that nobody talks about. Lowering your dose at the wrong time will destroy everything that you've been working so hard for. So today, I'm gonna show you exactly when microdosing becomes your superpower and when it becomes your worst enemy. Because there's a lot of hype about it and I hear a lot of people saying very wrong things. I'm Dr. Jones DC and I coach thousands of patients on GLP-1 meds. This isn't just professional for me. It's personal. I've lost over 100 pounds and I struggled multiple times in my life to maintain that. I know what it feels like to fight your own body every single day. Now I work with medical providers, helping people not just lose the weight, but actually keep it off without being chained to higher doses for the rest of their life. So here's the thing. First, I'm gonna clear up the biggest confusion around microdosing that's causing people to fail before they even start. Then I'll show you what's actually happening inside your body that determines whether a lower dose will work for you. I'll share the exact moment I knew my metabolism had finally healed and what that free freedom actually feels like. And then finally, the exact processes that we use to transition patients to successful microdosing to maintain their weight loss for the rest of their life. But before any of that makes sense, you need to understand why most people fail getting microdosing completely backwards. I get messages like this every single day. Dr. Jones, I'm 80 pounds overweight. Can I start with microdosing either to save money or just because they feel like it's a good idea to take lower medication? And I love and respect the concern about taking medication or they don't want the side effects. I'll just begin with a tiny dose and work my way up slowly. And I get it, the logic seems sound, right? Less medication, fewer side effects, lower cost. What's not to love about that? But here's the uncomfortable truth, and I need you to really hear this. If microdosing works for you right now out of the gate, if you can start, and I gotta be clear, microdose, we'll just keep it simple now, means lower than the starter dose. If you can do that out the gate and start losing weight, what we typically see in our clinic is that the underlying metabolic dysfunction, meaning your body's energy systems, they weren't broken or nearly as broken as somebody else who couldn't do that. And in our experience, patients who respond to very low doses often have less pronounced insulin resistance, less chronic inflammation, and less severe hunger hormone dysregulation. So let me put this into perspective. Now I want you to write this down so that you can commit this to memory. I'll put it on the screen too as well. Microdosing is graduation, not enrollment. You don't walk into medical school on day number one and start performing surgery. <laughs> you need years of training. Before that can happen, microdosing is what you earn after you've done the hard work of healing your metabolism. So what does microdosing actually mean? Because I see people throwing this term around incorrectly all the time and it's driving me freaking bonkers. Okay, so here's my definition. Microdosing means maintaining an average weekly dose that is less than the starter dose. For Manjaro, Zepbound, Terzepatide, that's a dose that's less than the starter of two and a half milligrams. For Ozempic, Wagobi, Semaglutide, that would be less than the starter 0.25 milligrams per week. So let me show you what this looks like in practice. If you take 2.5 milligrams of Manjaro once a month, that averages out to about 0.6 milligrams per week. That's way under the starter dose. That's micro dosing or one of my personal favorites what I'm doing right now five milligrams every three weeks that's about 1.7 milligrams per week still under that 2.5 threshold but here's what most people miss and this is the part that separates success from failure microdosing is for maintaining results that you've already achieved it's not for creating those results in the first place now we're talking about weight loss here microdosing for autoimmune support whole nother conversation think of it like training wheels on a bike you don't start learning to ride with no support whatsoever you need those training wheels first. You need the stability while you're building balance and confidence. Then once you've mastered the fundamentals, you can ride with just an occasional hand on your back. Microdosing is that occasional hand. It's the gentle nudge that keeps you balanced after you've already learned to ride. Now here's where it gets really interesting. When you microdose correctly, after doing the metabolic healing work, and we're gonna talk about what that looks like later, you're using 80 to 90% less medication than people on the standard protocols. That means dramatically fewer side effects, significantly lower costs, and most importantly, you're not dependent on higher doses forever. God forbids we're gonna hear and wake up the next day that the FDA took away our access. I mean, it's on constantly back and forth, back and forth. Access is a huge issue, and the stress that comes along with it if you think you're gonna lose your access. So why doesn't this work for everybody right when they start? Why can't you just start everybody on a lower dose and stay low? This brings us to the piece of the puzzle that changes everything. Your insulin resistance, your metabolic health profile. So let me show you what's actually happening inside your body. So I'm gonna show you the pattern that I see frequently in patients who come to us they're in weight loss plateaus. They have full-blown insulin resistance, which means your insulin levels are staying 
elevated throughout the day. Your body spends most of its time in fat storage mode. It's literally impossible to burn fat. Impossible, very challenging. There's some nuance there because insulin is constantly telling your cells to hold on to everything. And this is the part that nobody talks about. When insulin levels are staying chronically elevated, it creates what I call dysregulated hunger. You're not just hungry, you're starving all the time. Your brain is screaming for food, even though you just ate. This isn't a willpower failure, this is biology. Your hormones are hijacking your appetite. This is why if you have severe metabolic dysfunction and you try to start with tiny doses of the medication, what we see in our practice is that those tiny doses often struggle to overcome the hormonal chaos. All those hunger and storage signals firing at once happening inside of you. It's like trying to turn a massive cargo ship with a tiny outboard motor. You need serious horsepower to change direction when you're dealing with that kind of momentum. That's what therapeutic doses do. They provide the horsepower to break through metabolic dysfunction. Now in our clinic, we often use lower therapeutic doses than the standard protocols, maybe five, seven and a half milligrams of Monjaro instead of pushing a 15, maybe 0.75, one milligrams of Ozempic instead of maxing out at 2.4. But notice these are still therapeutic doses well above microdosing territory. Now, if this metabolic dysfunction piece is starting to resonate with you, if you're realizing that maybe your insulin resistance is more severe than you thought, this is exactly what we help people figure out. We offer free discovery calls where our patient advocates can walk through your history, understand what you've already tried, and help you see whether your metabolism needs more healing before you can even think about reducing doses. You can either text number on the screen or you can check out the link in the description. But first, let me show you what metabolic healing actually looks like. Here's what needs to happen simultaneously for microdosing to become possible. First, you start therapeutic doses of GLP-1 medications to break through your metabolic dysfunction. These medications don't just suppress appetite. They actually help improve insulin signaling over time, meaning your cells start listening to insulin again at the same time. And this is where most people go wrong. You implement the lifestyle changes. In our case, the flow protocol, our signature approach, therapeutic fasting that matches your ability, daily intermittent fasting, resistance training, real whole food choices, the medication makes those changes possible by controlling the hunger chaos. But the lifestyle changes, those are what actually heal your metabolism. Watch what happens as these work together. I'm gonna show you the progression. Those insulin spikes start getting smaller. They don't last as long. Your body starts spending more time in fat burning mode and less time in fat storage mode. You'll see significant weight loss, typically 15 to 20% of your body weight. But more importantly, you'll feel different. The food noise quiets down. The constant mental chatter about eating, it starts to fade. And eventually, when your insulin patterns look like this, staying low most of the day with just small bumps after meals, when insulin is only elevated briefly after meals instead of staying high throughout the day, now you're ready for microdosing. If this progression is making sense to you, hit that subscribe button right now because we put out four videos per week breaking down exactly how to navigate this journey through GLP-1 medications and powerful peptides. And it also helps out the channel big time. So go ahead and hit that button right now. I wanna make sure you don't miss what's coming next because I'm about to share something personal that took me almost 20 years to understand. I used to think weight maintenance was all about mental toughness. Just white knuckle it, fight your body every single day, push through the hunger, ignore the cravings. I tried this approach for a very long time. It never really worked. I lost 100 pounds the first time when I was 16 years old. Traditional methods, cardio, resistance training, six meals a day, calorie counting, and it worked until it didn't, which is basically the very next year, I regained about 50 pounds of it. And then I lost it again. And in this cycle, this vicious cycle every single year, I would regain and lose about 50 pounds. Exhausting, unsustainable. I was trying to out mindset my biology, or as I like to call it, I was out trying to David Goggins it. <laughs> I was fighting against a body that was hormonally program to regain weight. This is what I finally understood. When your insulin resistance is still high, inflammation is high, weight loss maintenance requires constant vigilance. Your body is literally fighting you because your hormones are still dysregulated. But when you actually fix the insulin resistance, when you heal the metabolic dysfunction, your body stops fighting you or it starts fighting you much less. It's one or the other. I remember the exact moment that I knew something had changed. I was eating dinner and I got full, not stuffed, not forcing myself to stop, just satisfied. And the food thoughts, they went more quiet. And for the first time in my adult life, I wasn't thinking about the next meal while chewing the current one. And for me, my biggest issue personally is I just, I don't get full and I could just keep eating especially when the meal is really good. That's when I knew my metabolism was starting to improve. That's when I knew microdosing could become a possibility for me. Today, the effort for me to maintain my weight loss is about a three out of 10 instead of a six out of 10 like it was before GLP-1 medications. I personally microdose about five milligrams of terzepatide every four weeks. Sometimes I go back to back weeks, but I'm definitely taking at least two or three
three weeks off every single month. I can maintain a lean and muscular physique right now while being extremely busy in my life, only committing to the gym about three times per week. Not because I developed superhuman willpower, but because my metabolism actually works with me instead of against me. And what I believe is happening is that my improved insulin sensitivity is now doing the heavy lifting. The microdose isn't doing all the work anymore. The medication just provides gentle support. This is why people who try to start with microdoses ultimately never get traction started. They're asking the tiny doses to do a massive job. I want to hear from you in the comments. What doses are you currently on and how long have you been taking it? I read every single comment and I'll jump in with thoughts based on what I see in our clinic. Now let me show you what this transformation looks like for real patients, not theory, actual results. So Sarah came to us. She was on 2.4 milligrams of semaglutide, the maximum dose. She was dealing with plateaus, frustration, and she felt stuck. My doctors actually reset her down to 0.8 milligrams and focused intensely on her lifestyle foundations. She lost 15 pounds in six weeks after being plateaued for three months. Today, she's lost 62 pounds total and maintains on just 0.5 milligrams every two weeks. Then there's Robert. He's one of our favorite examples because he perfectly demonstrates what successful microdosing looks like. He started at 10 on terzepatide, implemented the full flow protocol. Now he maintains on two and a half milligrams every two weeks. <laughs> and I remember him saying specifically, I'm in control now. I'm not dependent upon these medications anymore. And he's saving hundreds of dollars every single month. Or there's Jessica who was stuck at 10 milligrams with nausea, brain fog, feeling cold all the time. Classic signs of being on too high of a dose without a metabolic foundation to support it. So my practitioners reset her to five milligrams, added proper protein intake and resistance training. She not only lost fat, but she gained back eight pounds of muscle. This is so important that we get this right. This is a pound of fat and this is a pound of muscle. Very, very different size. The transformation wasn't just about the dose. It was about fixing everything underneath. See, the pattern that I see after working with thousands of patients in our clinic, we typically see meaningful metabolic improvement over six to nine months of therapeutic dosing combined with proper lifestyle implementations. Of course, individual timelines are going to vary considerably. Then a gradual transition period that we typically see three to six months in our practice, decreasing that dose and assessing stability. The ones who succeed are the ones who have done the work. They fixed their insulin resistance. They locked in lifestyle changes. And most importantly, they shifted their mindset from I'm in a diet to this is just how I live now. And here's what you're probably wondering. How do you know when you're actually ready to make the transition? Because timing this wrong is where most people blow it. Let me walk you through the four signs that we look at in our practice. Okay, sign number one, you've maintained your weight for a sustained period. And in our clinic, we like to see at least two months to three months stability. You're not losing, you're not gaining, just stable. This tells us that your body has found a new balance point and mentally you're at the same place there as well. Number two, and this is critical, the effort feels sustainable. You're not white knuckling through every day. You're not obsessing about food. You're not counting down the minutes till your next meal. Number three, you've developed metabolic flexibility. Some people feel best staying keto or carnivore long-term, and that's perfectly fine. But in my experience, most people want to eventually reintroduce carbohydrates. I know I did. And if that's you, you should be able to have pasta at dinner now without spiraling. Enjoy birthday cake without turning into a week-long bitch. This flexibility is what freedom looks like. Let me be clear, not everybody will be able to do this. The first prerequisite is fixing your body. And then number two, you can't have a carbohydrate addiction. But we work with our patients to help figure that out. Okay, sign Number four, monthly therapeutic fasting feels doable. It's not torture. If doing a 48 hour fast at this point still feels impossible, that's often a sign in our experience that you may not be ready. The fasting should feel challenging, but manageable. Now I like to see certain lab improvements too as well. Fasting insulin trending lower, C-peptide improving. C-peptide is just another confirmatory marker to show us what fasting insulin shows us. But honestly, more important than labs, how you feel matters more than any number. If you're constantly fighting hunger, exhausted, or stressed out about food, those labs, they don't mean much. Now I'm curious, by the way, have you been able to reintroduce carbohydrates without spiraling? Did you cut out carbohydrates to begin with? Or have you been told that you should never cut out carbs. Let me know in the comments where you fall on this whole carbohydrate discussion, because this is a controversial one to say the least. Okay, you've hit all four signs. You're ready. Now let me show you the actual two phase transition that's going to get you from therapeutic doses to successful microdosing. Now I need to mention something. I'm not your doctor. I'm not anyone's doctor. I run the coaching department and I work alongside our medical practitioners. Any medication changes that happen need to happen with your prescriber. And if you're working with our clinic, you'll do it with our prescribers. Medical providers manage the dosing. I guide the lifestyle piece. Let me show you what this typically looks like. Okay, so phase one is the medication taper. So for example, if you're on 10 milligrams of trisepatide, your provider might reduce that to seven and 
a half. And then, and this is crucial, you stay there for at least four weeks. You're watching your weight, how your clothes fit, and most importantly, how you feel about your appetite control and your relationship with food. Only when those indicators are stable, do you drop to the next level. Maybe five milligrams, then reassess again, then two and a half milligrams. For Ozempic users, same process, 1.75, pause, assess, 0.5, pause, assess, 0.25, so on and so forth. During this entire medication taper, you keep your regular daily intermittent fasting and all the other lifestyle strategies like resistance training. Phase two begins only after you've reached your microdose level. Now you start decreasing your fasting frequency. So if you were doing weekly therapeutic fast during weight loss, you might reintroduce it to every two weeks. Eventually, many of our patients find that monthly therapeutic fasting becomes their maintenance rhythm. Some even transition to quarterly fast and maintain their results. And some might decrease the fasting windows first before decreasing the medication. There's no one way to do this. There's no research that's been done on these protocols. This is our clinical observation after years of doing Doing this and thousands of patients to back it up. Now here's the secret sauce that makes all of this work so much better. And I can't stress this enough. Everything else stays locked in throughout both phases. Daily intermittent fasting, non-negotiable. Resistance training three times a week, non-negotiable. You continue to prioritize your sleep and your stress management, non-negotiable. These are not suggestions. These are the foundations that allow microdosing to work. Remember Robert, how he went from 10 milligrams down to his microdose two and a half every two weeks? Only then did he start spacing out his therapeutic fasts. The sequence matters. So what does life actually look like once you've completed both phases? So let me paint you a picture of your new normal. You can eat pasta at dinner occasionally, especially on days that you lift weights without spiraling out of control. Birthday cake doesn't trigger a week long binge. You trust your body again. This isn't fantasy. This is what Sarah, Robert, Jessica, and thousands of our patients experience every single day. Your maintenance rhythm becomes almost effortless. This is what metabolic freedom looks like. Daily intermittent fasting is just how you eat. Not forced, it's just natural. Monthly therapeutic fasting keeps your metabolism flexible. Your microdose gives you just enough support without creating dependency. The mental shift is profound. That constant food noise, it's basically gone. That mental chatter about what you eat, when to eat, how much to eat, it's quiet. It's there, but it's quiet. You're not obsessing about weight because you have a system that works. And let me be real about challenges. Going on vacation, you might inject a little extra before you go. Stressful periods at work, maybe you temporarily increase your fasting frequency. Holidays, plan an extra therapeutic fast afterwards. But the difference now, you have tools not restrictions. You know exactly what to do. This is why this approach beats being on high dose GLP ones forever. In my opinion, let me know in the comments what you think. Does this approach make more sense to you? No more significant side effects. The nausea, fatigue, stomach problems, they're gone. You're spending a fraction of the cost. And most importantly, you're metabolically flexible, not medication dependent. Now look, if you've been on those high doses and you're, maybe you're on there now watching this, doing this metabolic healing work, it's not too late to course correct. That's exactly why we offer discovery calls. You'll talk to one of our patient advocates who will get to know your history, what you've tried, what's worked, and what hasn't. They'll help you understand where you actually are on this journey and what it would look like to work with our team including our medical providers who understand this exact process. If you're dealing with plateaus on your current medication doses, if you've been gaining weight after losing it, if you're worried about being dependent upon high doses for the rest of your life, or if you just want a clear roadmap to actually getting off or reducing down to microdosing, that's what this call is for, is to help you understand what that would look like. You can either text number on the screen, or you can check out the link in the description to book your free discovery call. They're gonna review programs and pricing so that you can see exactly what long-term success with our team could actually look like. Now, given that food and nutrition is such a big deal. If you haven't already seen this video, check out this one right here. These are the top 20 groceries that everybody, and I mean everybody on GLP ones or not, should have stocked in their fridge right now. So go check it out. I'll see you guys there.